I should have not went down this rabbit hole. My goodness, it cost me two hours of headache. I got a 2005 Chrysler 300 in the shop today. It was towed in yesterday, actually. And the backstory to this is the lady went to the park, did whatever people do at the park, got back in her car, went to crank it, no crank, just click. So then, you know, what do they do? What does everybody do? See if the battery's bad. So she called a roadside service, they jumped it, nothing. They towed it to another shop and then somebody told them about my shop. So they called and towed it here. This is all I know. So I've got the hood up and I've got a battery maintainer on it. It's not a maintainer, it's a charger because the battery was a little bit dead. Um, but they did try to jump it. So I don't think this is our problem. Okay, let's replicate the fault. They say it won't start, so, and it doesn't start. Nothing. It's in park, let's try neutral. Nothing. Hmm, okay. Let's try to figure this thing out. I'm going to take you on real time and uh, we'll see. Looks like the battery just went to zero on my charger. Oh, now it went to 12. Maybe it was just cycling. Okay. I really just want to make sure the battery's good first. Charge it up for a little bit. Stick it on 50 amps. Should only take about 30 minutes to get a good charge in it. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and scan it, see what kind of codes we have. I scanned all the modules and boy, I, I mean, it, there's codes in every module just about. The only thing it doesn't have a code is the electronic shift and the steering column. And that's insane. Let me uh, save these codes. Okay, so these are our codes, PCM, wheel speed signal. We got some lean codes and the TCM, which is the transmission control and the PCM is the power train control. Those will not cause a no crank. None of these shouldn't. Um, the BCM, let's see, torque. These shouldn't cause a no crank. ECU, this is interesting, in single wire mode. Hmm. Very interesting. CAM bus B, ABS, SRS, remote key battery low, radio, CAM bus B. I'm gonna clear these codes since there's so many, I just want to see what comes back immediately. I have them all saved. Hmm. Instrument cluster, CAN bus B, ABS, wheel speed sensor. This is the one in the instrument cluster that I'm mostly concerned about this would definitely be an issue all right so it looks like the cam bus b is in several modules so we need to look at cam bus b probably on a wiring diagram okay so here's the codes for the instrument cluster trouble code list. And this is the code we have, U0019 CAM bus B active. So let's look up that and here it is. Here's a schematic. 
cluster, front control module. So this is just a diagram that goes to the front control module and the cluster. Okay. Monitors. When the CAN bus B circuit is open shorted, this code will set. All right, possible causes. CAN bus B front control module or instrument cluster or CAN bus plus or minus open. Uh, I want you to go through all this list. Hmm. So we need to have a game plan here. It's saying CAN bus B is shorted. Um, so we need to figure out what all on the network is on CAN bus B. So I pulled up a wiring diagram. This is what I'm finding. This is the front control module and this is CAN bus B there. So I need to hook a scope up to B CAN somewhere. So I'm gonna to try to figure out the easiest place to do that and first just see what the signal looks like. Okay, so it looks like the occupant classification module that's under the passenger seat is the easiest place to plug into to get into the B CAN circuit. And I am plugged in right here is where it, it lives. It's a white wire and a white and orange wire. So I have my scope leads connected to that and they're grounded all the way to the battery. And let me pull up my scope. It looks like we already got some kind of signal. It looks like, let's stop it, make it bigger. Get all this junk off the screen. So it just looks like the blue trace is nothing. And that looks like a pretty normal can signal on the other side. Hmm. So we have nothing on one side of the can. Let me just turn off this channel, the red one. This should look very similar to the red channel, and it doesn't. So let me just make sure my probes are plugged up really good. Two. Feels like it's plugged in there good. Let's run it. There's something definitely going on with one of those CAN circuits. As you can see, one of these CAN buses is shorted to ground. So what I've done here is these are the two CAN bus B lines and this is my lead from my meter and this part is hooked to ground and it's on ohm so it'll beep when it finds continuity to ground so if it's shorted to ground this red pin is the one that showed good on the scope plug it up nothing this black pin was the one that was showing that was shorted to ground on the scope so plug it up and as you can see, it's shorted. So I don't know if it's a wiring harness. So I'm gonna leave it beeping like this and I'm gonna try to move the wiring harness around. I, I doubt that's what it is because it'll be really hard to figure out where that short is. So I know that there's a B can that runs it runs through here, these wires, and goes into this front control module. Um, let me see. 
I'm listening for that beep to go away. I don't think, I mean, how are we gonna find this? I'll look around a little bit. If I find anything, I'll bring you back. I mean, this thing's got a million modules on the CAM bus B. Like, this is going to be, I'm going to have to figure out, I'm going to have to make a list of all the modules that have CAM bus B on it. Okay, so I'm going through this CAM bus thing and I'm making a list of all the modules I know it has and the ones I'm not for sure have a question mark. I mean, look at all these. I gotta find a way to slim this list down. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to start unplugging modules. This is gonna take forever. I'm just gonna start with the easiest one first. Um, we'll start with this one, cause I'm already there. And we'll see if our CAM bus comes back. All right, I've been chasing this U0019B. Uh, can circuit shorted to ground. I confirmed it is shorted to ground. I've unplugged like three or four modules But I want to stop for a second before I go too far with this and Look at some more scan tool data. That's probably what I should have did first But it just occurred to me I need to look at some things to see if it's seeing a key in the ignition and it's seeing some basic data for this car to start because I have communication with the main modules, you know, the PCM, TCM, that should let this thing start. So let's do that. Okay, I got the scan tool hooked back up. A lot of these codes I generated from unplugging stuff, so I'm just gonna clear them and start fresh. All right, so these are the codes that just keep coming back. CAM bus active instrument cluster. That's the one I'm thinking it's possibly our no start. Okay, I'm in the ignition key status and everything looks good. Ignition sense true, ignition switch Switch status, run position, ignition unlock, run, start, state. Key in the ignition, true. Complex function request, don't know what that is. Maybe the fob, not quite sure. This, this is the, everything looks good. The only thing I don't know is why it says run. I wonder why it shouldn't say start when I turn this key. I'm turning the key now. And I'm wondering why that doesn't change to start. I don't know 100% why that is. Or if that's even a problem. Okay, I'm just going to take it back to the basics. And I should have done this first, but... This is the ignition power fuse. And when the key is turned into the crank position, that should come on. So, let's see. I'm cranking, nothing. All right, well, that's a problem. Let's see if I can jump it to power. Yep, let's see. It's running. So obviously, it's, I knew that key felt funny. I should have not went down this rabbit hole. My goodness, it cost me two hours of headache. Oh, you live and learn, people don't get it. These cars are crazy. Anyway, what I did was jump. Can you see that? I jumped power straight through my test light to the ignition starting fuse. So let's look at a diagram. So what I did is 
it's just the basic key switch. When it's in the start position, I should have had power on this fuse. Fuse 10, 5 amp, and I did not. So that's when you just saw where I jumped power to it through a test light and it started right up. So I'm going to go back to the ignition switch and see if we got power on pin 4 coming out. Uh, if, if we don't, end of story. We need an ignition switch. Okay, I'm testing the ignition switch with my test light. Uh, you gotta make sure your test light works. So this is ground, and this is, cause this cable's hooked to the battery. Okay, test light works. Right here, I'm hooked up to the ignition wire. It's pin four. It is a pink with a green stripe. And I'm gonna hook my lead up to that. So when I turn this key, if this doesn't light, then there's no power coming out of the ignition. Here's the key. Focus you on the light. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So all we gotta do now is make sure there's power going into the ignition. And then we're done. It's an ignition switch. But let's make sure first that there's power going into it. It does look like we have power on our bulb, on the main power wire going into the ignition switch. It looks a little bit dim. Let me hook a meter up and make sure we don't have a voltage drop. Okay, I got it all hooked up. I'm running the current through the meter. It's just basically going to tell us if we have a voltage drop. Hmm. 10.3. 9. And we lost voltage on that wire. What just happened? That's very weird. Did I blow a fuse? Something's weird. Okay, false alarm. I just wasn't connected very well. I had to take figure out what was going on. Sometimes these piercing probes don't make good contact. So the power going into the ignition is good. Let's just load test it real quick. Um, so we'll take this, plug it in here, and then take the ground. Yeah, we're good. See, the voltage didn't drop really low. If it drops more than like a volt, volt and a half, then it's a voltage drop. So we're good. Okay, I'm gonna order an ignition switch and put it on, and then we're gonna hear this thing crank. Don't click off. Okay, I got the new switch in. This is the new one. Here's the old one. Let's see. If we fixed it. <clears throat> okay, probably need to put my foot on the brake. Why is it not turning? Okay, something ain't right. Okay, it's Monday morning, it's been a few days. I had to just stop on this car and you can see I got a haircut over the weekend, so I might look a little different. Don't let that freak you out. So anyway, um, 
I put an ignition switch in it and it still had an issue. And let me show you what is going on here. This pin right here that goes into the, this ignition switch goes, clips on here and it turns, it turns it to start it. It'll start right now. If I turn this with a screwdriver and the key is in it so it can recognize the key and turn it. But, um, there's something broken right here. So I don't know why it'll turn partially. But when I go to turn it, it will not start. And then notice there's a tab broken off right here. There's a metal tab here. And that dinging will not go away. So I'm sorry about that. When I open the door, it just dings. So it has something to do with the sink of this key. It might think the key's still in it. I, I do not know. So I do have the whole assembly. I can get it, but I have to order it and it will take like a week. But I also found that I can possibly, I can change out the internal tumbler to this too. So I'm just gonna take it off right now so I can put it on a bench and work with it a lot easier and see if I, I can get this the internal guts to this. That way we can get this thing fixed and get it back to the customer. Okay, so I have to take off the um, skim module and all that does is it bolts off. It just unbolts, has a little bolt here and a little clip and it comes right off and what this does is when you stick the key in the cylinder it just picks up the frequency and then it sends this to the um, bcm or the pcm however this car is configured but this is what basically says okay you got the key and the ignition we'll let you start now so i had to take that off and this is like a park lock so it knows that you're in it won't let the car basically go down into drive uh, just automatically this kind of locks the park in that's what this mechanism does until like the foot your foot's on the brake and then it'll release this so it's kind of like a actuator in a way so let me take this off. Okay, so it looks like this, the part that's broken right here, as you can see, this just comes right out. All right. So I think I can get this piece, the pin. I think they call that the pin at the local parts store. we'll be good to go let me go check on that and we'll get this thing back together okay i got the new part they look exactly the same so that's good this is the part number 924739 chrysler 300 2005 model and it looks like it just pops right in Okay, so you just stick it in like this and turn it. It's kind of locked in there. Let's put it back on the car. Okay, and I'll put it back together. This just snaps on. How's this thing go? Like this.
Okay, let's put on the skim module. It looks like there's a tab right there. And it slides up on. Here's the screw goes here. Okay, I'm gonna put on the new ignition switch because where this oven was broke, it kind of messed up the insides, watered, wallered them out a little bit. This one's in a lot better shape. Okay, I'm gonna plug it up, make sure it works. Okay, everything's plugged in. Moment of truth. Well, that's it. All that mess for a stupid little piece broke inside the ignition. Who would have guessed? Hey, if you've made it this far, I appreciate it. I'm gonna put all this stuff back together. It's not a big deal and it's finished. So thanks for watching. I'll catch y'all on the next one.